Hi everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to our today's session and uh, today we are going to cover on the fourth chapter. We're going to cover on the fourth chapter. We Last class we studied on the word. What are the four ways that the Holy Spirit talks to us that we studied? The words through the instruction of God's word, the quickened word of God, the word that has been preached, and the inner voice. So now we're going to study. We're going to study on the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And we get to know like it's so important for us to have a communion with the Holy Spirit. This class reveals many things about our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Let's see. Whoa. Can one of us please uh, take up John chapter 16, verse 13 to 14? John chapter 16, verse 13 to 14. John 16, 13 to 14. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take off what is mine and declare it to you. Amen. 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 In the New Testament, Jesus, Lord Jesus promised us that he will send a helper, that is the Holy Spirit, who will be with us, who will be with us. And Jesus being our shepherd and Holy Spirit is always with us to comfort us, to guide us. The scripture says that, you know, he will send us a comforter who will comfort us. And you know, the verse 14 says, He will glorify me, for He will take of what is in me and declare it to you. And declare it to you. And also there's an assurance in John chapter 14, verse 16. Can we turn to John chapter 14, verse, verse 16? John chapter 14, verse 16. Can one of us please read? John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. Another advocate. Some of the version, the NKJV says the helper, and the other version says comforter. Well, he will abide with us, the Holy Spirit, which is given to us by the Father, abides with us forever. You know, this is the assurance that we have that he abides with us. In the Old Testament, we see how the Holy Spirit used to visit people and go. But in the New Testament, after the death uh, of Jesus, death and uh, resurrection of Jesus, we see Jesus saying that I will go and send the Holy Spirit who will abide with us forever. So the Spirit of the Lord who is abiding with us, how He abides in us. Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He, he does not forcefully come into us. We receive, when we receive Jesus as a Lord and Saviour, the Holy Spirit comes into each one of us and He abides with us forever because we have welcomed Him. So for us to receive the Holy Spirit, it is not that we need to be perfect. You know, some of us have this uh, understanding saying that we need to be perfect, we should be sinless, we should be righteous, or we should not have uh, any kind of addiction. Uh, only then uh, the Holy Spirit will come with us come inside us and dwell in us. Only then we can go take the baptism. No. 
that's not the way it is. The way we are, the way we are, we may be the lost sheep wandering in the wilderness, in the desert. When we look up to the Lord, just like how the lost sheep in the parable of lost sheep we see, is just like how the sheep cried out and the shepherd heard his voice. He, le he left all the 99 and he went in search of that one. I'm sure in our class each of us would have a testimony to share on that, how Lord encountered each one of us and called us. As we hear, that's the as we are, each of us will understand the word, will understand the same scripture and be applying to our own situation and circumstances that we have come across. The Lord came in search of each one of us and he encountered us, he searched us, he picked us. Just the way we are, the Holy Spirit came into us when we welcomed, when we received Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. And it's the Holy Spirit who is within us, is leading us. And He is guiding us in the right way. It's only through His strength that we, uh, we would have overcome our difficult situation, we would have had a breakthrough, we would have had a healing, our addiction left us. How? Because the Holy Spirit came into us. The addiction of many years, Maybe it is not very easy for us to, you know, with our human strength to overcome anything. But with God, what is impossible? Nothing is impossible with God. We can glorify God in all the area of our life. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 16. Can one of us please read? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 16. Yes. But as it is written, I has not seen, no, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. Can can all of us say that we have the mind of Christ? Can we declare this over ourselves? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, saying that we have the mind of Christ. Can we say that over ourselves? Y'all can unmute it so that I know that we I all are declaring have, it together. I have, I have the mind, mind of Christ. Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind, have the mind of Christ. Christ. Satan has no power over me. Satan has no power over me. Satan has no power over me. Amen. Satan has no power over me. Amen. Amen. Very important to declare these scriptures into our life. It is very important. See the very, uh, very verse starting in verse nine. It says, "The eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him."
God has a better plan for us, as he said in Jeremiah 29, 11. Many of us would have thought, like, what will be my next? But God says, I have a plan for you, plan to prosper you and give you a future. And in Corinthians ch uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 9 says, The eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart, of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. We are his children who love him. God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God, and he reveals it to us. How God can reveal it to us? Through his Holy Spirit through His Holy Spirit, who is dwelling in us, who is abiding in us, and He is abiding in us forever. One of the sessions in our Bible college, when I read this scripture, when I read the scripture that Holy Spirit abides in us forever, what a confirmation, what a joy that was. I can still remember the day that I read the scripture, that the Holy Spirit is abiding in me. It spoke to me. This word quickened in me, saying that the Holy Spirit is with me. Because as a person, I know what type of person I am. You know, the assurance, the minute I knew that the Holy Spirit is in me, and He's abiding in me, and He will never leave me, that brought a great joy in me. That brought a great joy in me. Till date, whenever I read the scripture, I go back to the day that I first read this word. And I, it also takes me, it also takes me uh, to, the, uh, to the day when I went for my first retreat meaningfully. Before that, yes, with our parents' force, I've gone to many retreats, but it didn't change me. I was the same person as I went and came. But this time, there was something changed. In 2008, when things were not very well in me, you know, I started yearning. There's something different. There's something that I don't get in this world is what I need to seek for. And that I can only get through God. A school friend of mine, she just accidentally met me after 10 years. And you know, the Lord has inspired her to pray for me in her prayer time. She had prayed for me for two months. She has fasted and prayed for me for two months. She does not know what is happening in my life for her to fast and pray. But then here, yeah, something been quickened in her spirit, she was burdened to pray for me. For two months she has prayed, and after two months she texts me and asks, I'm going for a retreat, would you like to come with me? And according to my understanding, retreats are only for the people who are addicted, who are sinners. I'm perfect, I'm not addicted. Why should I go? And that is when as I was going through depression and uh, many uh, addictions I was part of, which was very difficult, and I know what I'm doing is not right, and I, I felt the need for retreat. I felt the need, let me try if God can change me. This was the attitude that I went for the retreat. And the very first day as I entered, I realized that I need God who can save me. And all the way that I was leading my life was so sinful. I got the realization of my life. The path that I was taking and I was heading my life to was not the right path. And during the course of time, I realized how important the Holy Spirit was. And I started desiring and yearning for the Holy Spirit. And as it was a five days retreat, and as we near the fifth day, I, I made a decision within my spirit. I said, no matter what, I think it was on the fourth day night, I made this decision. I said, no matter what, Lord, I need this Holy Spirit. 
I need this Holy Spirit to come within me so that I can step out of this retreat center and go back home. If not, without and I'm not going to leave this place. I need the Holy Spirit because I know who, as a person what I am. I can get back to my addictions. And you know what type of friends I'm surrounded with. I cannot speak to them about Jesus. And uh, the retreat was themed saying that you shall be my witness till the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And when I encountered the Lord in that, in that retreat, I said, Lord, I will change my life. I will. But the Lord clearly said, I want you to be my witness. And God convicted me that night. And the next day I was prepared I was prepared to do what he wanted me to do so that I will be the witness to the end of the earth in all Judea and Jerusalem and Samaria and to the end of this earth. I took that. I said, yes. I don't know how it's going to be unfolded in my life. I don't know. But I, I accepted. I accepted that call that day. I made a decision. I ask God, God, give me your Holy Spirit. And from then on, I could sense the Holy Spirit speak to us in that inner sense. The Lord guides us and he becomes so real to us. He guides every step of us. He leads us. The inner voice, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit becomes so real. He bears witness with our spirit. And he calls us that we are the children of God. Can we read Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to 16? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Amen. 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 See, there's an inner witness within us, the Holy Spirit. So that we have been led by the Spirit of God and we know that we are the sons of God. We are the sons of God. The minute the Holy Spirit comes with us, every spirit of bondage, every fear that grips us will break in the name of Jesus. Yes, we are the child of God. We have been encountered. We are walking in the path of God. But different situation, different circumstances in different areas, maybe this spirit of fear can grip us. It can hold us from not walking in the way that we are meant to walk with authority, with the fullness of God. But the minute we start looking up to God in that area, and when we cry out to God saying that I do not have the spirit of fear, but I have the spirit of power, love and a sound mind, three areas, power, love and sound mind. The spirit of fear can take away the love, can take away the power, the authority that we have in Christ and the sound mind. It can lead us into all confusion. The minute we claim on this verse, saying that I do not have the spirit of fear, you refuse it, you rebuke that spirit that is in you. And we see the breakthrough. We see the breakthrough. We see the spirit of the Lord overtake us and gives us that spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, a clear mind. You know, the people say, I mean, the word of God says the battle, the mind is a battlefield. So when we have the mind of Christ, we can conquer every battle that we face in our daily life. 
the scripture says that we we uh, do not have the spirit of bondage of fear but we have received the spirit of adoption through which we cry out abba father as the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit and we have this relationship with god been restored back as a child of god we are the sons of god we are the child of god so that you know god is no more god like he is our abba father the relationship is much dear much closer yes throughout the bible we see um, you know uh, we see uh, like uh, every man of god giving name to god like elohim and you know uh, god is a provider jehovah jaira uh, jaira and uh, jehovah rafa many many instances they started giving god a name but then this name is about all names which is much powerful and this name is more dear to god where we can call abba father the relationship been restored back through jesus our lord where we were once slaves we were once in bondage have been restored back in the sonship of god we are his son we are his daughter and god is our father this relationship is much dear god do want to lose this relationship do want to lose this fellowship with us that's why in john 3:16 it says that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross so that we can be restored back in god the holy spirit uses the inner witness as one of his primary ways to lead both to to confirm and to lead us the inner witness comes to us through the conviction through knowing through assurance in many ways the impressions feelings and sensations with the holy spirit that he gives to us in our spirit different ways that he quickens us we need to have this relationship with the holy spirit the desire within us should grow to know him more to lead to be led by him we need to desire you know the scripture says that all the other gifts will be given by god all the uh, gifts of the spirit will be given but there's one gift that we need to seek which is that one gift that we need to seek and ask god sorry the gift of prophecy gift of prophecy okay uh, um yeah gift of prophecy is given by the lord any anything else faith again the word of god says faith has been credited to you so again that has been given by god there's one gift speaking in tongues okay good speaking in tongues this one gift gift of tongues can activate all the other gifts in the spirit gift of tongues is very very important gift of tongues this gift when we have it can activate all the other gifts so we need to desire for this gift the gift of tongues because the gift of tongues can uh, can reveal the hidden things of god into us when we pray in tongues many things happen within us many benefits it can it can <clears throat> break our bondages it can clean us it can repair us holy spirit can build us it can reveal the secret things of god it can teach us it can guide us gift of tongues is very very important we need to desire for this gift of tongue 
only when we desire and when we seek, this gift will be activated in us. It's not that we do not have, all of us have this gift within us. But the activation happens when we desire for that gift. Do all of us have in this class, do all of us pray in tongues? Is there anyone who's seeking for this gift? Good. Today, at the end of this session, we can seek, we can ask, let this desire grow in us. The more we desire, very soon this gift will be activated. We all of us need to seek for this gift. You know why? Because this is our birthright. The, uh, <clears throat> after my retreat, I was back to Bangalore. And the Lord supernaturally led me to a prayer group where I used to attend this every month, you know, every month, two days, I guess, yes, it was those days, two days in a month, every time. So the first time, the very first time I went to this uh, prayer meeting, you know, I heard the preacher say, but before that itself, I was desiring for this gift, gift of tongues, as uh, you know, uh, many of us will have an understanding that, you know, this gift, um, you know, only some of us can have this gift because we are not perfect. You know, I was uh, given an understanding saying that uh, only certain people, God will choose to give this gift of tongue, not for everyone, not all can pray in gift of tongues, one. Second, they said, you need to be very perfect to receive the gift of tongue. So we all know our weaknesses. We all know, um, you know, how perfect we are. So I was compromised with my understanding. But still, I desired. I said, Lord, what is that I can do? I need this because I see all my uh, cousins, friends pray in tongues. First, I am not able to understand. And, you know, I need this, you know, there was a, a desire, even though I was given this understanding, but my spirit was not satisfied with that, what they shared with me. But still within me, I desired, I desired the desire in me just grew, just grew. And the minute I went to this prayer meeting, the first as I was listening to the man of God, every word went into my heart because my heart was prepared as a good ground and I was yearning for God's word. And the more I was learning in that prayer meeting, as the word was spoken, I was receiving that word. And the man of God shared this saying that every child of God, he said, every, he said it this way, uh, you know, the gift of tongues is the birthright for every child of God. The minute he said that, I, got hold of that word and I started speaking to God, saying that, Lord, the gift of tongues is the birthright to every child. And I am your child. I am your daughter. So I need this gift. I need this gift. It is my birthright. I've been born again. I've been born in you. And I have you in me. You are leading me. And I'm one with you in spirit. And now I need this gift. And I also said, I thank you that I received this gift. And by the end of the day, uh, you know, maybe I prayed this morning around uh, 11.30, 12 maybe. By the end of the day, around 5, 5.30, before we could leave, you know, um, I, I went up to this uh, man of God and I, uh, uh, you know, uh, after the prayer meeting, they asked no, for special prayers. So in that meeting, it was like that. So I went with all my cousins, with my family, and uh, they all had a prayer request that the man of God could pray for them. And my turn was last. The man of God asked me, what do you want? All I said is, I need the gift of tongues. He screamed. He said, what? That made me get scared. I thought, OK, I had something wrong. But he said, you already have within you. All you have to do is close your eyes and say hallelujah. 
I closed my eyes and I said hallelujah. The minute I said hallelujah, I saw that I started speaking in tongues. I started flowing in gift of tongues. When we are one in spirit, the spirit activates that gift in us. It activated that gift. And the whole evening, even after coming home, I was uttering, uttering. May not be the same words that I speak today, but it was just few words, or it can just be the sound, or it can just be the groaning in the spirit. And that's how I started. That's how I started. Every time I want to pray in tongues, I, I used to just say, Hallelujah, 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 and start groaning. And then few syllables, few words, one by one, started adding it. And it went on. The journey goes. Still now it goes. And don't give up. Even with that few syllabus, keep, keep pressing on and you will speak in the word of God. The second is the assurance within you. The assurance. Can one of us read Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, please? Philippians chapter 4, 6 to 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 The peace of God is very important. As we walk in the peace of God in our heart and in our mind, God releases new things. He can guide us with a clear heart and clear mind. When we have to make decision over certain things, when we see God, if we have the peace of God in that area, we can proceed with it. But otherwise, if your heart is disturbed, if your heart is disturbed, then we may have to pause and ponder what needs to be done. It is very important to have the peace of God. Sometimes, you know, we are disturbed and God is asking us to pause and wait upon Him so that we get clarity. The minute we see, when we wait on Lord, we see the changes that we need to take, the steps that we should avoid, the plan that we need to change. And when we obey the word of God, when we obey the direction of God, we see the peace of God rule in our heart. To which also you were calling one body and be thankful. So we have that green signal, we have that joy, we have that peace in our heart. The desire within. Can we read Psalm 37? Verse 4. Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. As we live in the Spirit, we will also walk in the Spirit, and we will be led by the Spirit. When we walk in the Spirit and be healed, we are influenced by and we are directed by the Spirit, we can see the desires in our heart also according to the Word of God. The desire will delight in ourselves. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Our desires may not be the desires that we had before, but this time, because we are walking in the Spirit, and we have been led by the God, Our desires are different. Our desires will be uh, that which pleases God. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24. And one of us read, and the other person read John 15, 7. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 24. The fear of the wicked will come upon him, and the desires of the righteous will be granted. John 15, 7. 
If you abide in me and my words Jump abide in you, you will ask Jump what you desire me. and it shall be done for you. Yes, amen. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be given to you. When we desire godly things, and that is birthed in our spirit, and then when we follow God in these things, we see whatever we desire, it shall be done. It will be given to us, it will be granted to us. The knowing within. Can we turn to Acts chapter 7, verse 23 and 24? Acts chapter 7, verse 23 and 24. Now, when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the child of Israel, and seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptians. 24. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hands, but they did not understand. So in this, we see that when Moses was 40 years of age, something rose up in his heart that gave him an understanding that God would deliver the Hebrews through him, a knowing within him. We all know that you know Moses encountered God at the burning bush, and that's when you know he took up. Uh, the call and he went back to the Egypt to deliver the Israelites. But then he, much before that, when Moses was in the palace and he was 40 years old, the Bible record, the scripture has been recorded saying that when he was 40 years old, that he had this knowing within him that he need to deliver the children of Israel. And that what uh, and that's why he was led to go meet his brothers, his family. And then when he went there, he saw uh, two, uh, you know, Egyptian fighting. He struck one of the Egyptians, and then he fled to the median. But what was the knowing within him? He knew that he's been called all of his year, they are one way or the other, to make the decision in our life. There's a knowing within, just a knowing. It may not be a man of God came and prophesied over you, or you had a vision, you had a dream. No. Sometimes it's just the inner man. The Spirit of the Lord who is in us is is acknowledging, is, is giving us that knowing, a clarity within us that you are called to serve. You have been set apart. I need you. There's just a knowing within you. May not be something dramatic, but then just a inner man, just that uh, inner conscious telling you that this is the way, go at it. As the scripture says that my sheep hears my voice. He speaks to us through that small, still voice within us. We need to get ourselves tuned to that inner voice. And when we start tuning, we will see Holy Spirit prompting within us. We feel prompted within us. Sometimes it's a strong urge, a nudging in your spirit to do something. To do something. It'll push us to glorify God in our life. The prompting is so strong that we know it is from the Lord. And it usually uh, calls us to take action immediately. Immediately. So when we walk in the Spirit, we can come across many instances in our life, many instances. The prompting will be so clear, He can lead us 
there was one such instance that I came across in my life was I knew an elderly uncle who was uh, staying alone in Bangalore. He was very aged. He may be in his late seventies. I knew him for last, uh, you know, for past uh, three or four years. So I used to visit him every Christmas. Every Christmas, I used to just visit him to give uh, a piece of cake and wish him and come. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, once a month, he used to call and talk to me or I used to call him and talk to him. So I used to just be in touch with this elderly uncle and be there for any help. So there was a certain time that where he could not no longer stay alone in a rented house. So he needs to uh, be shifted. He was part of a, a very good uh, Methodist church in Bangalore. So uh, with their help, he shifted. He moved to the uh, moved to the uh, home for the aged, and he was staying there. Then one day I received a call that he was not well. So I went and visited him. So I was in touch with him. One day, all of a sudden, it was more than a month. You know, I didn't call him, but I knew that he was not well. Suddenly, there was a prompting within me to call this uncle. And it was very strong from the afternoon. I just pushed. I said, OK, I'll call him later. I'll call him later. And the evening, it, it became very strong. It was not something very uh, normal. So immediately, I picked my phone and I called. His name was Andrew. So I used to call him Uncle Andrew. I'm dying. I want to see you before I could die. I asked him, Uncle, where are you? He said, I'm admitted in St. John's Hospital. That is all he can speak to me. He could not speak anything. I said, Uncle, I'm coming. I just said, I'm coming. Immediately, I took my bike and I went, not knowing which flow, not knowing which ward is in. I just went, kept praying in dark kept praying throughout the journey I kept praying I prayed for the traffic to be cleared because you we know in Bangalore how the traffic is and the hospital St. John's Hospital is a very big hospital in Bangalore it's huge those who are in Bangalore may know how big it is so throughout the way journey I kept praying for the uh, uh, the traffic to be cleared and then God lead me to the right flow and also, without the hospital pass, they will not allow anyone enter in. I said, Lord, you make a way that every door will open for me when I go. And you lead me exactly to the flu, exactly to the bed where uncle is. I just prayed. As I prayed, I reached this hospital, which uh, generally takes 40 minutes, but I could reach in 20 to 25 minutes. And, you know, I was led by the Spirit. I was just praying in tongues. I kept moving. I kept going. Exactly. Uh, the security did not stop me. I don't know why. I just went. I crossed the securities. There are two, three securities to enter in. I crossed everyone and no one stopped me. And I exactly went to the flow. I just, I just, I, I just sensed the Lord saying, press seven in the lift. Press second floor. I press second floor and Lord said, go straight, take left. I went straight, take left. And there was a name board and I saw his name, Andrew, written there. And I went exactly to the room. He was lying on the bed. And the treatment was not started. I went, I looked at him. I said, uncle. And he looked at me and he said, you have come. I said, yes. And all he said is, doctor has given me uh, this medicines to get. And he gave me a, a, a small uh, prescription with a, with a few rupees in it. And he asked me to get. I said, uncle, I'll get. But his condition was very bad when I met him. And as he was talking, as he was talking to me, you know, uh, I said, wait, I went, I informed the nurse that his condition is not good. Please come and see him. And I came back. They said, we will come. When I came back, his condition was getting bad. I saw his eyes was going up and I started praying in spirit. I started praying in spirit. The, the, I've never prayed for a sick to say, Lord, let him rest in peace. 
I've always prayed for healing. And I, with that intention is what I started praying. I started praying in tongues. I laid my hand on him, started praying. But the words that I uttered out of my knowledge was, Lord, I commend his spirit into your hands. This is the word that I, I uttered. I said, what am I saying? And when I opened my eyes, when I opened my eyes, I saw his eyes moving and he was, he was just gasping out of his breath gasping for his breath and he, he gave his last breath. And I said, Lord, I commend his spirit into your hands. I've never prayed like that any time before. It was completely the Lord. The minute I prayed, I said, let his soul rest in peace with you. And that's it. That's the prayer that I prayed. He rested. And doctors came back. They tested him. They said, He's resting in peace with the Lord. <clears throat> I was alone with him, not knowing what to do. But in the meanwhile, before when I conversed, I asked for his phone. I asked for his son's name because they were not in Bangalore. They were in Mumbai. He just gave me the name. And that's it. After that, I started praying. And after everything over, I took his phone. After some time, I called up his son. I told him. I informed him about his dad. And then I, I saw uh, some of the church members' number on, on his phone who admitted him. I inquired with the sister who brought him and got him admitted here, and they gave me the name. I called them. I informed them. So for them to come to the hospital, it took two hours. I waited till then, till everything goes. I was there. Lord gave me the courage. Lord gave me the boldness. The Lord directed me what I need to do, because I've never done that before. It was all very new to me. That's how when we when we pray in tongues, when we are led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit prompts within us. He clearly direct, directs us. Take left, take right, go straight. Do this, say this. When we allow the Lord to work in us, the Spirit of the Lord can do great and mighty things in and through us. It's never too late. It's never too late to have the stirring within us. So whenever we are hearing the testimonies of the Holy Spirit, remember, there's a reason of me sharing this. There's a stirring that is happening in each one of us who are in our class, who are listening to this. It is much stronger, a stronger sense to call into action to get into that fellowship with the Holy Spirit, to get into that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because the stirring of the Spirit cannot be quenched. It is not an emotional stirring. It is the stirring that is stirred by the Holy Spirit. We see in the life of Ezra, we see in, uh, in the book of Haggai, how the Spirit of the Lord stirred Zerubbabel, the son of Shethiel. How this stirring led them to take action in their life. How, how the Holy Spirit stirred Paul in his journey. <clears throat> With this, we will move on to the seventh point, the fourth knowledge within. Can one of us read Isaiah 42.9? Can I read? Yes, please. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before the spring forth, I will tell you of them. Thank you. Thank you. We also see in 46.10, declaring the end from the beginning, from the ancient things that are not yet seen, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. That is how God declares things, even before. And we see in the Old Testament how God declared things to Abraham, even before he could make him the father of nation, the blessing of Abraham. How God can bless us today, he declared it then. As he declares the four things, he also gives us the warning within warning we see in acts chapter 20 verse 22 to 23 now i go bound in the spirit to jerusalem not knowing the things that will happen to me there except that the holy spirit testifies in every city saying that the chains and tribulations await for me 
He gives us the warning. Holy Spirit always leads us, guides us, teaches us. And He also gives us the warning, the things which we are going to face in our future and how we can handle them. That's how the Holy Spirit leads us. Okay, with this, we will end this class with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, we honor you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, which dwells in us, which quickens our spirit to listen, to abide to that inner voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you have stirred each one of our heart to have this relationship with the Holy Spirit, to yearn and thirst for more of your Spirit. Because your word says, Blessed are the man who is poor in spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have stirred our heart and our mind to yearn for more of you, for more of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you will meet each one of them at the point of the need. Lord, I pray that you will increase the Holy Spirit in each one of us, O oh Father. You'll activate the gift of the Spirit to each one of them as they seek and desire for more of you. And those who are yearning, Lord, for the gift of tongues, I pray that you will activate it, O oh Father, as they seek you and pray. As they ask, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will activate this gift in them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you are faithful, God. You are a God, a Lord. In you we trust. Thank you for the faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. For today's session, I hope it has blessed each one of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Ma. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.